So this Lightboard video aims to go through and summarise the main parameters that I require you to talk about when we're speaking about radiographic appearance of normal versus abnormal anatomy. So I have created and explained everything video regarding this, however I thought I'd just do a Lightboard video just to complement it as well. So as you've learned, when we're talking about the appearance of certain structures on either a CT or an MRI, we use the convention known as radiographic appearance, which is going to characterise a structure based on its density or its intensity, what it looks like and where it's going to attach to. So just to summarise the main parameters that I want you to refer to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a series of MRI and CT scans to constantly refer to as we're going through these parameters. So the first component of radiographic appearance is going to be the density or the intensity. Okay, so the density or the intensity is obviously going to be more specific depending on whether we're talking about CT or MRI. So what I've done is I've brought up a CT scan on the left um, and this is going to be a CT scan then of a fracture through um, the ankle region or the foot. So when we're talking about density of CT and MRI we use terms such as semi-radiopaque, radiopaque and then radiolucent. So remember that when we're talking about the density of a structure, it is usually going to be correlated to the attenuation. So this is going to be the capacity of a structure to absorb the x-rays. Whereas when we're talking about intensity, intensity is only going to be specified for MRI because we're looking at the concentration or the amount of hydrogen protons in a structure, which is essentially correlated to the water content of a structure. So this is really useful for soft tissue interpretations. So the intensity, so if I write up here, that is going to be MRI specific. So terms then such as a void structure, high signal intensity, and intermediate are terms that you should then become well versed in. So the second thing then that we're going to talk about is going to be the shape or the characteristics of a structure. So this is going to be the second point. So when you're describing the shape, I want you to think about as if you're explaining it to a 10 year old. So I want you to use really simple terminology such as linear, um, oblique or diagonal, horizontal, circular, semicircular, irregular, these sort of um, terminologies to describe the simple shape of what something might look like. In terms of characteristics, this is going to be more crucial for describing pathology, so when we're looking at fracture evaluation, as well as when we're looking at pathology in the case of soft tissue tears or tumour interpretation, which is not relevant to functional anatomy, but that is going to be more for the medical students. So if we focus on fracture evaluation, the density of a fracture on a CT scan or an X-ray is always going to be radiolucent. Okay, so that's linking back to the density up here. Remember in my revision lecture I spoke about the different descriptors associated with fractures. So structures such as oblique fractures, commuted fractures, or spiral fractures. I'd also like you then to comment if I ask you to specify, talk about the displacement of a structure, this is then going to be if it is displaced or non-displaced. You can also comment in terms of the characteristics of whether it's a complete fracture, so transversing through the entire width of the bone, or if it's an incomplete, un, incomplete fracture, which is just going to be a fracture of the periphery or a small segment. So this is going to fall under the characteristics then of your fracture. For structures such as if we refer now to the CT scan of the foot, if we look at the talus for instance, we know that the talus is characterised as a dome shaped structure. If we look at um, a structure such as the metatarsals for instance, the metatarsals are going to be long rectangular structures, so you can characterise this as a rectangular long bone or a long rectangular um, structure. The third bit then that we want to talk about is the location. 
So if I just switch pens, So the location is then going to refer to, in our field of view with our scan, where exactly do we see the fracture or where do we see the bone or the structure of interest. So coming back to the snowboarder's fracture, so a snowboarder's fracture is obviously going to be in the subtalar joint. As we can see, the most of the fracture is going to be on the inferior aspect of the talus. So you would then tell me it's going to be on the inferior aspect of the talus or within the subtalar joint. So that I know that when I'm looking at the scan, I know exactly where to focus my attention or, for where, or where my eyes should actually look for a fracture. When we're looking at um, soft tissue structures, for instance, and we know that there are attachments, so in the cases of ligaments or tendons, where they're going to attach to bone, I do expect you to specify the attachment points for bone. So for example, if we refer to our acronym LAMP, so we should be aware that LAMP is looking at the attachment points for the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. Here, breaking this down, we know that the posterior cruciate ligament, for example, is going to attach to the medial condyle. So this is going to be the M in LAMP. So the medial condyle of the femur, as well as the posterior aspect, or the posterior intercondylar fossa of the tibia. If I ask you to describe the location of the quadriceps femoris tendon, for example, you should tell me that this is going to be on the patella or the tibial tuberosity, for instance. So if we just run through a couple of quick examples then, so with the snowboarder's fracture still up, in order to explain the radiographic appearance then of this particular fracture, the first thing we'd say, we know it's a fracture, so it's going to be radiolucent. The type of fracture, we can see that as a commuted fracture. So you'd say that it's a radiolucent commuted fracture located then on the inferior aspect of the talus or located in the subtalar joint. If I then bring up a picture or a scan of an MRI of the knee and I ask you to describe the radiographic appearance of the posterior cruciate ligament, I would expect you to acknowledge that regardless of whether it's a T1 or T2 weighted MRI, ligaments are always going to have a void signal intensity. So you should be able to recognize firstly that the ligament is going to be a void structure. The shape, you would say that it is a diagonal or um, an oblique band. You can comment on the thickness, so you can say that it's a relatively thick band that is going to, in terms of location, attach to the medial condyle of the femur as well as the posterior intercondylar fossa of the tibia. So I want you to think whenever I ask about radiographic appearance, you need to remember these three major components. If you only tell me two, so in terms of the density and the characteristics, that is only worth half a mark. To get full marks, you need to remember all three. Okay, thank you very much for your attention today.